In this video, we will look at how to use the crank nicholson method to solve a, a partial differential equation called the heat equation. In the heat equation, there are two independent variables, the time and the position x. We will solve this partial differential equation using numerical methods. So the first step is to do discretization. We covered these methods in the previous videos, uh, but I'll just recap it here. So first step is to discretize your domain into discrete points. So we discretize, we discretize the position along this axis and we discretize the time as well as shown on the left axis. The problem is then defined as such. Um, the main goal of solving a partial differential equation is to be able to solve for all the points on the grid. For time equal to zero, we consider these as the initial conditions. So all the points here are known. These are the initial conditions. For positions at the extreme value, so x equal to zero and let's say x equal to one, the, uh, the values are known as well and these are called boundary conditions. These are the red values you see here. The objective is then to solve for all the unknown values which are marked as green here. There are multiple ways to go about this. One was the explicit method that we saw in an earlier video in which we had one equation that we used to solve for one unknown. So we use these three points below it to solve for the one unknown. And we wrote a for loop to go through each, each set of points and solve for each of the, the unknowns. Once you finish a row, we go to the next set. The equation for this is shown here. This is an explicit equation, so you can solve for the unknown value, which is the green one using the, the boundary condition value, the boundary value and the initial condition values. Then we saw the implicit method. In the implicit method, we, we use these four points here to form an equation. However, in the equation, we will have two unknowns. So we cannot solve it explicitly. In this case, you have to assemble a set of equations. So we go to the next position. So we have two equations and then we go for the next position again. So in this case, you can form three equations and within the three equations, there will be three unknowns. So the three green dots that you see. here. So once you have three equations and three unknowns, uh, these are three linear equations. So you can use any of the linear uh, methods, linear algebraic methods to solve for the unknowns. And that's how we solve the implicit method. In matrix form for a three by for this particular example, this is how it's going to look like. So we are solving for the unknown green values over here. And um, so we could call this a matrix A and the right hand side vector B and the unknowns X and the solution would be X equal to A inverse B. Okay. The crank nicholson method is very similar. Uh, the only difference is instead of using four points, we will now be using all six points here. It's like a combination of the explicit and the implicit method. And this in increases the accuracy again. I won't go into details about why it does that. Uh, the mechanism is still the same as the implicit method. You have one equation in which you have six terms, but two unknowns, two of them are unknowns. Then you would use the next set of equations. So you move by one position. You'll have three unknowns and you get another equation. You move again by one position. In this case, you end up with three equations and again, three unknowns. Okay. The final matrix form of the equation is 
I'm going to be like this. Again, we are solving for the unknowns, the green values. And it's just a matter of computing these matrices in Python. So let's see how to compute these in Python now. So we have a sample problem that I made here. So we're going to discretize it along the x direction using a step size of h, along the time direction using a step size of k. We'll define our two boundary conditions using a list, and we'll define our initial condition based on which is supposed to be a function of x. It can be a constant as well, but it has to have as many elements as x. Okay. The first step is to identify how many number of points there are in the x and the time direction. So we can use the length command and we'll store the one for time in m. Once you identify the size of your problem, you can create an empty vector of the empty matrix of zeros to store the result. So we'll say temperature equal to np dot zeros of the same size n comma m. Now we'll define our boundary conditions. So the first index we are going to deal with is is position. And the second index is going to be time. Okay, so for the first index, we will say position. So this boundary condition. So the first boundary is when i equal to zero, and we are talking about all time values equal to boundary condition zero. Same thing applies for the last boundaries. But instead of typing in m, oh sorry, n, you could just say minus one till the end. Uh, minus one and all columns. Boundary condition. For initial conditions, we will be looking at when the time index is zero. That's the initial condition. So t for all columns and initial time. Initial conditions. Then we need to calculate the lambda, or in this case, lambda is already a a built-in for function so we are not going to call it lambda we'll call it the factor this is calculated as h divided by h squared we already covered how to create these diagonal matrices in the previous video so i'll just use the same technique over here we'll have the a matrix as np dot diag and we just have to provide it with the factor so 2 1 plus lambda so 2 that will be 2 plus 2 lambda, 2 plus 2 times factor. Now, if you multiply a list with a number, it will repeat the same element inside the list uh, n times, for example. Okay. But if you look at the diagonal element here, you can see that you should have three terms, 1, 2, 3. Although your n in this particular case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this one should only have three terms. So we'll do n minus 2. The diag function will put this on the main diagonal. If you supply the next keyword, uh, next input, 0. To go to the next diagonal element, or the next diagonal, you can use the, the second parameter can be minus 1, so it will be the bottom diagonal, this one. Minus one, and you can do one for the upper diagonal. MP diag, and this time the value is just minus lambda, so minus factor. Again, we have to multiply it by the number that you see here. So the last one was n minus two. This will be n minus three. And the same diagonal is on the other side as well so instead of minus one just change it to plus one just confirm if you get the right response or the right answer so you can see it here minus lambda and this is two plus two lambda now you have to create the same matrix on the other side 
Um, it's the same technique, so I'll just call that matrix uh, D. And it's pretty much the same command as this one because it's a tri-diagonal matrix. You have three diagonals, so let's make it here. And two one minus lambda, so two minus two lambda. Probably the factor, the sign over here changes. The sign here changes as well to positive. 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 Everything else remains the same. Confirm it. Yep. Now to solve it, we just have to loop through like last time for every time value and solve for these unknowns simultaneously. Once you solve it, then you go to the next time value and then solve for them simultaneously. So we write a for loop for j in range. We're using j because we are looping through time. And the range will start at 0 and end at m minus 1. Because we are solving for one step ahead of the j value that you choose. So if you choose j equal to 0, it will start here at 0 and you'll solve for the next value. Okay. If you keep doing this and you reach the last value uh, and j happens to be 4, this number will then become 5. So we don't want that to happen. That's why we have a negative 1 added over here Okay, to stop the loop before it exceeds the final value, final uh, time value. The next step is to get these numbers, the initial conditions t10, t20, t30. They form the last row in your time matrix. So you can get that by saying b equal to t. So what are the position index for these blue dots? The position index does, does not start at 0, it starts at 1. Okay, so we have to say 1. And it goes all the way till the end but skips the last value. To do that in Python, you just say 2 minus 1. And we need the first, uh, or we need the, what do you call, the points when j value equal to 0 here. Or at, at j basically. Okay. So this will be j. Uh, in order to prevent the t matrix from being affected when you do any kind of manipulation to b, you want to take a copy of it. So just explicitly state that you want a copy. Okay. Otherwise, any changes that you make to b might affect your matrix t. Okay. Next is so this what we code line number 23 only gets you this one. And we just call this B. So now we can call the entire thing B multiplied by B. Here's the dot product between the matrix that we created and the vector that we just extract. I'll store the same result inside B again. So B multiplied by B. Sorry. So don't do multiply. You have to do NP dot. You can only do multiply if you have to define these as matrices. But right now they're just NumPy arrays. So the next step is we need to take care of the boundary conditions. So we have two boundary conditions, one is here and one is here. We need to add that to our right hand side. Okay. So we will do that here. We'll just say the first term is going to be equal to the term itself plus factor multiplied by t and here you can see we are at j so this is j this is j plus 1 so we have the value from t i minus 1 j minus 1 oh, sorry j and we have t of i minus 1 and j plus 1 and the same this happens for the first equation and also happens for the last equation, but from the other side. So this will be t i plus 1 j plus 1 and t i plus 1 j. We need to take care of all these boundary uh, values. 
So in here, it will show up as T00, T01. So that's T, position is 0, J plus T, position is still 0, it's at the boundary, and J plus 1. Okay, so the boundary at the, at the layer that you are right now and the boundary at the future layer. So that's one boundary done. For the other boundary, you do the same thing, B of minus 1 equal to B of minus 1 plus factor multiplied by T of 0, comma, sorry, minus 1, comma, J plus T of minus 1, comma, J plus 1. And finally, your solution is then equal to the same thing we did last in the last video, linear algebra dot solve A comma B. Okay, B being our right-hand side uh, vector. Okay, and now just to clarify, this entire thing is now B. Okay, this entire thing is B. And once you find the solution, you need to make sure you update your T matrix. Otherwise, this for loop cannot proceed as you solve them. As you solve the values, you need to plug it back in here so that you can go to the next layer and repeat the same process. So to update your T value, we are we are updating the green dots here so what's the index of these green dots here the position is not starting here because the boundary is already known so we'll skip this boundary and the last boundary so it's going to be from 1 till minus 1 and the time index is going to be j plus 1 we are in this layer this one and we'll update it using the solution that we just found Let's look at the final output. Let me just let's round it up. Okay, there you have it. So we have our solution. I'm gonna use the same code that we used in the previous uh, previous video to plot it as well, just to confirm it looks reasonable. It does look reasonable. It was the uh, parabolic curve is. Uh, hot in the beginning and then as it cools down the temperature in the middle starts to come closer and closer to the boundary values okay so i hope it's clear thank you